Hey there, it's another sunny and 75 day here in Southern California. So I'm getting ready to work on my cars today and I thought I would give you guys a shop tour and share some of the tools I have and what I think you might need if you're getting started. So this space is nothing special. This is my home two car garage. It's got a little more room than two cars. I'll show you a little bit in the back. But uh, this is where I live. I have a family and two kids. And the first question I get all the time is like, where's all the kids stuff and where's the bikes and the golf clubs and all that? Let me show you. This is the alley like behind my house. So this is definitely cluttered up right now with some of my parts because I've overflowed. But this is basically, you know, the beach chairs, the bikes, some of the, uh, the gear for skiing and golf. My wife's car and my personal car is usually in the driveway. Sometimes it's in the front of the house. But we have our two daily drivers plus my son's car. So between those three plus the two, the two uh, Porsches, it's five cars in a two-car garage. And the floor is nothing special. This is just bare concrete. I'm pretty hard on it. There's paint drips everywhere. There's jack marks. There's holes in it for, I'll show you later, for the lift. So I, I would love to have epoxy floors, but it might be more trouble than it's worth. And then looking up, the ceilings are just 10 foot ceilings. So I can't really put a four post lift or anything to store more cars. And the joists and the roof line are open. So there is some storage up there. You know, that's my, uh, my very first bike. And this is my first uh, go-kart right here. That's the space and uh, let's get into the tools and I'll show you around to some of the secret spots later. Okay, starting in this corner over here, I'm just gonna, gonna go all the way around, but this left corner is where I keep the air compressor. This is a big one. You don't really need one this big. Um, I like this one because it does go to uh, pretty high pressure. Right now it's not all the way pumped up, but it'll go to 175. So that with 80 gallons is a lot of air. So it rarely needs to run. Okay, even if you're just starting out, I do recommend an air compressor. One of the first big tools you need to purchase. Reason being, uh, even though there's great cordless tools today with brushless motors and lithium ion batteries and stuff, it's still nice to have a compact air tool. And I use them a lot in working in confined spaces. Plus, if you're gonna do any painting you know, on your, on your car, I don't recommend rattle cans at all. It's gonna be a little hard to see here, but it does have a rubber hose, goes right up to the ceiling, and then there's a copper coil. And that coil is there to really cool the airflow before it goes into some of the shop tools. And so it, it runs along the top of the shop here, and there's an exit uh, in a couple places. This is one of them right here. That hose is kind of messed up, but there's actually a water separator and a pressure regulator right there at the top. So I'll drain that probably once a week or something. And then I set the air pressure to around 90 PSI for air tools and stuff. Here's another copper line that my hose is currently connected to. It has a drain valve there too. So by the time the air goes through all that copper, it's pretty much cooled down. The water's condensed out of it. It'll typically just rest right there in that drain. And that keeps the air tools pretty clean. Right here, this is a, the room in the back, but this has got another uh, gauge and regulator right here. Okay, I love to make little gadgets and tools and all kinds of little supports and stuff. So I keep a fair amount of extra material just on hand. There's aluminum, steel, copper, whatever. All the long stuff, I just store it here in the corner. And to get stuff out, there's just a little, little hinge there. One there and there's another one down there. Keeps it organized. On this shelf back here, um, extra parts. This is the bead roller. I've used that quite a bit. That, that I use to shape uh, metal parts. Haven't used it recently, but it's a very handy tool. That's something that you probably don't need as a beginner. One of the things I make are some wooden tow boards for 356s. So these are all the extra cutout pieces from the manufacturing of those. So I got a bunch of this quarter inch birch plywood, got some MDF, just different size pieces of plywood, some real thick stuff. And I use it for, you know, hitting things with hammers, protecting it, 
adjusting things, setting up heights. It comes really valuable. Also on the drill press, when you're drilling, you don't wanna go through into your metal table. This Space Saver tire should actually be in my car. It's for the 911, just haven't put it in yet. And then this guy down here is a homemade shop press and it's really set up as a sheet metal bending brake. And it's really useful, not only as a bending brake, but also for pushing in bearing races and compressing things and interference fit items, push them in and out. This comes in really handy. And clearly I didn't prep any of this prior to this video. So this is kind of as is, um, this is what I typically work, work with. Um, this is my plasma cutter. It's a Lincoln plasma cutter, 40 amps, I believe. It can, runs on 220 volts. Really useful, but you, as a beginner, you probably don't need it. You can probably get by with the typical angle grinder and cutoff wheel. I just like this better because I think it's a little safer and it cuts through thicker metal. These clamps are kind of handy too. Just keeps things kind of orderly. Those glass bowls are for parts cleaning and stuff too. Also on this cart is my new welder. This is the Prime Welds, kind of an Amazon special. This is a TIG welder only, and I'll maybe do a video on this. This machine replaces my Miller machine. It actually had some issues with it. Rather than fixing it, I just bought this one. This one is more powerful. It's got more knobs a little bit more advanced than the Miller, and uh, the price was unbelievable. And coming down here, this is the ultrasonic cleaning tank. Um, really useful. I definitely recommend if you're doing car work that you get something like this. This is a 10 liter, and uh, for the price, it's certainly something you should get no matter what level you are. It just makes cleaning so much easier. Pretty safe to use, so definitely get this. Under here is a little bit more storage, half shafts, internal transmission parts, differential steering box, hubs, rotors, all the kind of heavy stuff, just keep it down low. Okay, this is the uh, argon tank for that TIG welder right there. And you gotta be careful, keep these things up against the wall, tied to something so they don't fall over. It's pretty dangerous to have in your shop. But I like the big one only because it's more economical and you don't have to go to the welding stores often. These right here, really useful for holding up your car in the air so you can work underneath it. So these are something that I made myself. I call them tire stands. And you just put the car on top of them and then you can put the jack underneath the stands and then they telescope open. So you can get your car about 24 inches off the ground with a creeper, you can roll right underneath it. See, there's the creeper right there. If you don't make your own, there are some wooden they call them crib blocks, and it's kind of like a Jenga game. You can stack them to whatever height you need. That'll get you as far as your jack can go up. These have an advantage in that you can kind of jack it twice. One, to get it on the stands, and then second time around is putting the jack between the top and the bottom there and going even higher. So these I like a lot. Now this shelf has definitely got more storage. Some of the new 911 rubber bits are up there, lighting grinding discs, uh, electrical supplies, some of the spare parts for the 911, like all my hardware and bolts and stuff are in there. Some of the polishing tools, and I do have a, uh, a tumble deburr tool. That's just a rock polisher. It's good for refinishing hardware. Uh, a lot of the 356 hardware was refinished in that tumble deburr machine with some rotating media. And then a drill press is something that I think is a must have. I think you definitely need to have a drill press. Uh, it makes drilling holes so much easier than doing it by hand, plus they're straighter. So this is something I couldn't live without. Not an expensive item either. I think this one was a yard sale purchase, probably under 200 bucks. Then hiding underneath the drill press are some more tools that I think are really useful. Try to grab this out. So this is a, what, they, what one of the brands is called Porta Power. And if you're working by yourself or you're just not strong enough to get something moved, that this thing is like a hydraulic jaws of life, opens things up, pushes things for you. I had done a lot of repair to my chassis and this helped me get it lined up. And so this is just the pump. There's several different attachments that go on the end of this hydraulic hose. So you can push things, you can pull things. It's really a handy tool. I would recommend this if you're doing 
any kind of body work, it's a lifesaver and makes things so much easier to do by yourself. Up here is some spare parts, oil catch cans, ratcheting straps. Uh, this saw right here is an older saw. I haven't used it in a long time, um, but it is important if you want to cut anything off. It's just a basically metal cutoff saw with an abrasive disc. I have a different saw that I use more often, but this thing um, is what I would recommend if you're just starting out. Jack stands and standard jacks, all the sort of lifting things are right here too. Okay, I'm gonna open up the toolbox here and show all the hand tools, but before I do, um, real quick thing, like on organization and clutter and all that. So I'm the only one who works here, and what matters most is, you know, can I get the tool or part that I need, you know, quickly? And uh, as far as tools go, I can always find the tool I need because I put things back in the same place every time. Sometimes parts, um, I have so many parts rolling around, Sometimes I just place them on a shelf and that's when stuff gets lost. So I try to do my best, but you have a choice between spending a lot of time organizing or spending time, you know, getting work done. And so my time's pretty limited. So I tend to, you know, focus on putting tools back, but parts are another story and that's something that I could do better. But let me show you the toolbox. It's kind of organized. Okay, a lot of clutter here in the top. This is kind of overflow. Some of the electronic hand tools, whatever I don't have uh, room for in the drawers, basically gets um, up here at the top. I do clean this every once in a while, once a month. Probably needs to be cleaned now. But just opening some drawers, you know, these are everything that pinches. Everything that is a plier, that's what those are. And then down here, this drawer is everything that cuts. So there's some things out of place, but everything that cuts, wire strippers, uh, side cutters, specialty cutters, there's snap ring pliers, a couple things in there regarding that. I don't want to go through and take too much time. Uh, pencils, scissors, uh, these are just random drill bits. Oftentimes you want to drill a hole, it doesn't really matter what size it is. So the kits are always missing some drills it seems. Um, I do have a nice kit that's got it all complete. But most times I just want to grab something that's close. So I'll use these first and then I'll use the precision, you know, nice kit if I really want something precise. This does most of my jobs. Adjustable wrenches, cutters. These are the screwdrivers, all Phillips in this drawer. And then I don't know why it skips a drawer, but all the, um, all the flats are down here. These are specialty tools that are like inspection mirrors, little grabbers, um, deburring tools, saw blades, a lot of random stuff in there. And then here's where you, one of the things I use the most, this is my metric drawer and it's nothing but sockets. So everything clips into space. So if there's a socket missing, I know right where it is. This obviously goes right here. So here's something I use all the time. These are my, you know, three eighths drive, six point metric sockets. And so this is something I can grab. And then extensions, ratchets are here, some adapters and universal joints and stuff. Directly below that is the um, SAE drawer. Down here is the wrenches. I do have the, like the flare nut wrenches for brake lines and things. Some long skinny wrenches, real thin. <clears throat> Sometimes you need to get in thin spots. Some are ratcheting, some are not ratcheting, and then there's some overflow, miniature wrenches and stuff. All my tools are mostly craftsmen. I do have a few snap-on, a few Mac tools, but mostly all craftsmen. When I was like 16 or 17, I worked at Sears, and so I got a lot of good deals. Still have those tools. This toolbox came from there. This toolbox underneath here is made of wood, and this is something my dad made for me when I was like probably 12. So all the air tools in here. I mentioned before, air tools are pretty cool because they're so small. This is probably my favorite air tool. I think um, if you have an air compressor, you should get one of these. It's just real compact, real easy to control. Uh, these Rolock discs and sandpaper are great for all kinds of stuff. So I have you know right angle drills that are really something you're never gonna get a conventional drill in. You know, the body saw, it's a Matco, but Body saw, something you probably need if you're doing auto body work. Drills, die grinders, cutoff wheel. You see me use that a lot on a lot of fabrication. Air hammer, spot blaster. You know, another angle grinder with, or another die grinder <clears throat> with the uh, wire wheel on it. 
pretty well used, cleaning all kinds of metal parts and stuff. Next drawer down is a tap and die set. You're definitely gonna want a tap and die set in addition to your basic hand tools. And then a couple electronic tools, a couple measuring devices. See, I just saw this is out of place. So probably in a hurry, I put that in the wrong drawer. So everything has a place. This drawer down here is a lot of my uh, measuring tools, machinist tools, uh, micrometers, calipers, bore gauges, um, hole gauges, radius gauges, protractors, um, you know, digital degree finders, all kinds of stuff. You accumulate over the years. This drawer is probably the most expensive drawer, but you don't want to cheap out on inspection tools. Buy the best inspection tools you can because it really makes a difference, especially if you're going to be doing engine building. Spend money on good inspection tools for sure. I'm not going to get all of them out, but there's a couple um, dial bore gauges in there that are probably in the four to five hundred dollar range. Then down here, the heaviest drawer is kind of a junk drawer. It's got pullers and saws and fish tapes, uh, wire wheels, big sockets, things like bailing wire, rope, string, all the, all the little things that you just don't have a place for. Okay, so moving on up there, I got some tarps and some plastic. That's used to keep overspray off of stuff when I am spraying either primer or paint. And then right here, hanging up on this bar, this is a alignment system. This is all homemade, but this is an alignment rack for the string method, attaches to the front and rear of the car. This is specific to my car, but it really does work well. Spent a little time making this, but I was really happy with how it works. And then I just store that fan there. Summertime, it's a must to have a little bit of a fan, just to keep the air moving, keep the heat out of the garage, it's really helpful. And then way up top, I store like my tram gauges, um, the engine stand, rebuild stand. There's some sway bars, you know, things that might go on my car, I'm not decided yet. Door panels, those are 356 hoods, just, you know, extra stuff. I just store it way up top. Okay, just behind those alignment racks are some more storage for raw material. So things like sheet metal, practice welding, Whatever you need, small, thin sheet metal. This is more solid stuff, um, bar stock, angle stock, chunks of metal. This is plastic and fiberglass sheet. Random things here in the middle, uh, round tubes, square tubes. These are just small cuts that actually fit in these containers. And inside here, this is technically not a fire cabinet. It's not insulated as a fire cabinet, but it's better than nothing. And so this is where I keep all my chemicals spray paints, lubricants, acids, cleaners, primers, clear coat, anything is right here. That bucket is full of muriatic acid for stripping plating. I got some, a uh, little bit of fuel in there, evapo rust. everything is stored inside here. This pegboard right here, sometimes it changes. I went from kind of metalworking tools to this is now set up for sort of sanding body tools. Uh, but I do keep some universal things here like clamps and lights and glasses and stuff. And then this is another toolbox right here. It's just kind of overflow. It does have some of the sanding stuff in it. The first one is all my Allen wrenches and some like Dennis pick tools, center punch, a lot of small Dremel type tools used for metal work. The next one down, these are all my chisels. And uh, for some reason, these are, I'm not sure why they're in the store. These are for like concrete, concrete drill brits. A couple cutoff wheels. This is something um, I use to knock the slag off. Kind of a homemade tool. Some specialty tools. I don't know, I was trying to probably get the dents out of my, uh, my floorboard, so I had to make some kind of strange punch but putty knives, scraping tools, all right here. And then further down, there are all the nut drivers. Um, this is a, a seal removal tool. 
just happen to go in there. I have a special automotive box that sometimes I put that in, but for now it's right there. These are my longer breaker bars, three quarter drive. Then this drawer is nothing but clamps. I do believe in a lot of clamps. You can never have too many, especially when you're working alone, you need, you need to hold stuff. I just move this out of the way. This is packing paper. I do do a lot of shipping, so that's how I get the packing paper off. Just pull and tear. This drawer is actually just a office filing cabinet. It's kind of a cheap toolbox, but I've got all my hammers kind of thrown in a small little spot because I'm mostly done right now with metalworking, but specialty dollies, different punches and special tools used to get all kinds of unique areas. This is my favorite dolly, but you know, there's, there's other dollies that are sort of custom made just to reach certain things. This is where I keep my corded power tools, strip it disc, drill, Dremel tool, and then here's some sanders, my angle grinder. Inside there is a sander, extra sanding discs or extra sanding belts. These angle blocks come in handy for setting up, you know, big fabrication things on my table. Extension cords are always hanging kind of where you can get to them. I like to have stuff that you use quite often just hanging out in the open. You know, if you hide stuff behind cabinets, then you're constantly opening and closing drawers. So I like to have things open. If you look at the cabinets there, everything's open. But I almost forgot my welding table is probably the most important thing in the shop. I think it's made it in every single video I've ever made. This is just my go-to table. It's on wheels. Uh, two of the wheels are fixed, like these wheels are fixed. They don't, they don't pivot. But then the other wheels on the other side do. So this is something I can clamp to. I can hammer on, I can mix on. It's just, you can clean it off real easy with some sandpaper. Use this all the time. Here's more clamps, you can never have enough. Um, long things like a level, that's my uh, alignment gauge for checking the wheel alignments. And then down here below is something that I would recommend if you've got a car project like mine that doesn't drive. This is a winch just bolted to the floor. This is a Harbor Freight, $30, $40 wrench. It does have a remote control, which I keep up on that board there. So I can uh, literally sit in the car and tow myself in and out. Like I said, shipping from here. So I got extra boxes. So up here is just where I keep my broom and shop apron and a little, little brush, something to dust the car off with. Gotta know what time it is. Fire extinguisher. Try not to keep this wall too cluttered, but I always have you know extra parts and boxes that are coming and going. This cart, just roll it around for some extra space. Right now, it's got some chemicals in the bottom. These chemicals are for doing the yellow chromate on zinc plated parts. So it's just a quick dip on that. Um, this stool has seen better days, but I use it all the time. This oil has just came in. This is for running the engine on the test stand. Pen grade, high zinc, 2050. Just little tiny things. There's hardware, used hardware, new hardware. And then all these coat hangers are just for things that I'm either plating or painting. Just, they just hang out there until uh, they dry. This is a big item in the garage. This is a two post lift by Max Jax. It's really handy. So this post here that's facing me, this one stays bolted to the floor. And then this one right here is the one that's, well, they're both on wheels, but I roll it over to the middle of the garage and then bolt that down. That allows me to lift up my car. It goes all the way up to the ceiling. So this Max Jax is perfect for a 10 foot ceiling and my car, it's a short car. That's the pump system right there. It's a really, really nice system. Um, like I said, you don't absolutely need a lift, but it certainly does help. Like I said, I got a lot done with just the tire stands. Another cabinet with no doors on it. This is where I have my battery chargers, some cleaning chemicals for the 911, car wash kind of stuff. And then this welder is the MIG welder. This happens to be over here at the moment. Sometimes I roll it in different places, but this is just a 110 volt MIG welder. And this isn't quite as big as the Argon tank, but it's still a pretty big tank. So I don't need to fill it very often. Flat sheet. I got some things, you know, hanging up there on the wall and I got some things down here on the floor. I try not to put much on the floor, but you get extra supplies and you just don't want to part with it. So I've just done a complete loop of this main area here of the garage. It's about 20 feet by 20 feet. 
two car garage, real standard. You know, nothing in here is elaborate or extensive or impressive. It's basically just old stuff, things I've collected for, you know, like 30 years probably by now. And um, I have some of my favorite snap-on tools, but like screwdrivers, I really do like snap-on screwdrivers, especially the Phillips ones. But for the most part, these are things you can pick up at a swap meet um, with the exception of maybe some of the inspection equipment. Some of my nicer equipment I actually keep inside in a closet. I'll show you that in a little bit too. It's inside. And back behind here is kind of another room. So this garage originally had a laundry room and that's what this room back here was. It's kind of a big laundry room and then it also has, this is a little corner office that I, uh, I set up so I can kind of close the door and keep my computer clean and stuff. I don't spend a lot of time out here, but there is a little office. It's basically just a computer and some monitors and, you know, messy, uh, messy desk, printer, shipping scale and shipping labels, a little bit of Porsche stuff on the walls, but not much. I don't spend a lot of time out here. This is the bandsaw that I talked about, the cutoff saw before, the abrasive one. This one is a really nice bandsaw. It does the same thing as the abrasive discs, just a little bit uh, cleaner, no sparks, a little bit quieter. I just like it a lot better. I do like this bench grinder a lot, that big wire wheel. It's really useful, cleaning threads, cleaning parts, taking off rust, and then grinding things uh, to fit better, grinding bolts, whatever it might be. This is kind of my staging area. You know, this is behind the scenes. So I like to get things for the next video. I like to get them set up on this table for next week. And this has been kind of cluttered up for a while. This has got some of the 356 brake parts on there. Then inside this toolbox is really mostly just hardware. Uh, some of this is like for house projects, just nails and screws and whatever. Uh, these are all SAE bolts and nuts and screws and fittings and things like that. I don't use this drawer that much. This drawer is more of the smaller screws, also SAE, some generic washers, things like that, extra long bolts. This end has the metric drawer, so there's a little bit of mix of new and old here, but uh, I, go, I go to this drawer quite a bit. More metric screws, O-rings, fittings, plugs, Rolock discs, strip it discs for even small things. These are really good for cleaning parts as well. A Little bit of junk in here, some small connections, uh, random things, silicon oil. This drawer is really custom tooling. Uh, tooling that's sort of handmade to work for different things, either on the hydraulic press or to hold something, to take something apart, all kinds of things here, specialty tools, you know, forming tools. And then this is kind of over, overrun on um, power tools, polisher, big half inch drill, DA sander, shrinking disc. Then over here on the right, more smaller screws and rivets. Electrical items like switches and terminals. I have another one of those organizing cases that have more electrical things in it, but that's what that that's what that is. It's a little bit of overflow. Transfer punches, light bulbs for the shop, extra Allen keys. Overflow, a little bit of spray paint here, but not much. And then just a big junk drawer of nuts and bolts. If you really can't find something, you can look in there before going to the hardware store. And sometimes I have it, sometimes I don't. And then up there, some uh, towels, safety equipment, um, tape, sandpaper, hose clamps, different attachments for my drill for sanding and cleaning sheet metal, tools that are in cases, my spray guns right there, some of the uh, undercoating equipment, filters for the paint, Lots of things in that shelf right there. 
this is where I'm storing these two engines at the moment. It's getting a little crowded in here. I like to uh, I'd like to be down to just one extra engine if possible, but I got lots of engines back here. And then uh, here is kind of my my for sale rack. Everything on this rack is either for sale or some of the 356 parts are here. Torque wrenches, power supplies, a lot of tools that are used to measure things. So I'm really big on, on measuring stuff. So I have sound meters and computer data acquisition systems. And I got um, t electric tachometers, chargers, power supplies, transformers, all kinds of things that are kind of test equipment. Extra engine, that one is an industrial engine that um, I'm gonna use to combine with that other numbers matching engine to rebuild someday. This is kind of inventory for my engine stand test business. And then this is uh, empty shipping boxes, ready to pack things up from the for sale rack. Everything's kind of sitting on top of an old table saw, which I rarely use as a table saw, mostly just a table. Then way up in the ceiling, I have even more tools. A lot of the specialty automotive tools are up there on the top. Probably not gonna get those down today, but I'll let you know what's in there. So the specialty automotive tools are things like timing lights, dwell meters, uh, valve spring compressors, pullers, brake bleeders, uh, vacuum gauges, fuel pressure gauges, oil pressure gauges. It's like a kind of a big box that's really specialty equipment. Okay, now inside the house, I pretty much have this whole cabinet right here. This green cabinet is sort of dedicated to manuals and things, so I'll show you. There's probably 20 years worth of 356 registry magazines, different event literature right in here. And these are some of the manuals, maintenance type books, workshop manuals, 356, some engineering textbooks from who knows when. More, more books. And then that cabinet's full, so I also have this cabinet right here. It's a little bit of overflow. These are all the 911 manuals. And inside this closet, I have even more stuff. Um, some of this is like RC car sort of toys, but some of it is equipment that I just don't either have room for outside or I want to keep it protected. This is where there's like cameras and endoscopes and oscilloscopes and soldering equipment, extra batteries, connectors. I also have a storage unit where my current 356 engine and transmission are, along with most of the 356 parts. It's jammed in like a five by eight storage. The other place I have access to that's outside of my home is a community workshop. And that's where I use things like the English wheel, some of the shrinker stretcher tools for sheet metal. They have, it's a complete maker space. So they have CNC machines and lasers and cutters and graphic sticker machines, 3D printers. One of the motivations for making this video was to really acknowledge that I think I've taken for granted how much stuff I have and what it's like to, to be able to find it quickly. So recently I was doing some work at the Peterson Automotive Museum. It's a beautiful workshop, lots of space, rows and rows of cabinets, everything looks great, all the doors are closed. But to get something uh, located, because they're not my tools, and it was really difficult just to, just to get the tool you need, um, it was hard. So I think that having things organized, putting things back in the same place, knowing where they are, is really, really important. And Come to find out, there's a couple tools that I have that they don't have, and I'm sure the, the opposite is true too. I think they have stuff that I don't have, but I'm able to get a lot done in this little garage with some of the tools I have. I'd say about 95% of the tools here could be purchased at a swap meet for you know, pennies on the dollar. If you were to go out and buy everything brand new, of course, all the things I have are expensive. The only thing I would buy brand new are air tools, uh, cutting tools, and potentially the measuring tools. Um, if you do buy used measuring tools, buy good ones and make sure you get them professionally calibrated. Sometimes having a cheap tool that you can cut up and modify is better than having like an expensive snap-on tool that might be dedicated to the job. So that's it. Um, I went through it really quick. If you have any particular questions about one particular tool or something I showed or went over too quickly, just leave a comment below. If you think there's a tool that you have that I don't have and I should, 
then you know, let me know what that is because I'm, I'm obviously pretty curious about that. And now it's time for me to get back on the car. Um, I'm not filming my work on the car this week only because it's the same as the front bumper. I'm just prepping the rear bumper for paint and doing some final fitments on it. Nothing uh, different than the front, so I didn't want to bore you guys with the same sanding and prep uh, for paint monotony because it is pretty monotonous. So thanks again for being here and enjoying my happy place. This is where all the stuff happens and hopefully you learned how I do it.